I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on mechanics. We'll discuss an example based on Newton's laws of motion in this particular video. In case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. Also, check our website for the latest updates. We'll talk about mechanics, kinematics, and dynamics. Well, in case you're beginning to learn about mechanics, it is very important to understand the difference between kinematics and dynamics. This example will illustrate. The example here is two boxes with mass M1 and M2 are attached at the end of a light inextensible string. The string passes over a fixed light pulley as shown in the figure. These are the two masses which are attached with this light string which goes over the pulley. When the masses are released from rest with the string, with the string as stout, the mass M1 travels vertically down a distance of 2.5 meters in 1.25 seconds. Find acceleration if M2 is 3 kg and mass M1. Find tension in the string. So, so initially we keep these masses held so that you know the system is not moving. However, the string is taut. Now when you release at that time these two masses are at rest but as soon as you release M1 being greater than M2 it goes downwards the right side goes down with an acceleration of A as shown in the figure. We are given the mass of M2 which is 3 kg and we need to find what is the acceleration with which M1 is moving, what is the mass of M1 and what is the tension in the string. Okay, So I hope the question is absolutely clear. Now how do we solve this question? Uh, before getting into the solution, we'll look into the definition of mechanics, kinematics and dynamics. So when we say mechanics, it is really a branch of physics which is related with the motion of bodies under the action of forces. So mechanics is a study of both kinematics and dynamics and let's see what kinematics and dynamics is. Kinematics is the part of mechanics that relates the four variables of motion to one another which you learned earlier, right? V, U, A, T, the velocities, initial and final, acceleration and time, and also displacement. So these are actually the five variables, right? You can say four with respect to time, right? All the functions of time. So with these variables, you learned earlier the relations between these variables s u a v right now dynamics is the part of mechanics that is related with the cause and effect of motion relating force mass momentum and energy so do you see how they are related so mechanics is both kinematics and dynamics in mechanics we have these two branches when we study kinematics, we are not interested in the force which causes the motion. We are only looking at the motion, correct? In dynamics, we are also focused on the force which causes the motion, right? So, so Newton's laws of motion actually relates mass with acceleration and force right 
So that is what it is. Now, when we are defining kinematics, saying is the part of mechanics that relates the four variables of motion to one another, in this case, we actually do not worry about the external force. We only see how these variables, S, U, A, V, are related. Now, the question here for you is, if a physical body is at rest, will it be considered in motion? That's an important question to consider. So, in kinematics, when we say displacement, which is S, it is change in position. Now, change in position could be positive, could be negative, or could be zero. So, a physical body at rest is with change in position being zero. So, it will be considered as in motion also. You get the idea, right? So, the value of S could be positive, negative, or zero. If S is zero, then the body is at rest. Okay? Now, Let's look into the Newton's laws and see how that relates to mechanics. Newton's first law of motion defines inertia, as you know. A physical body maintains a state of rest or uniform rectilinear motion unless an external force is applied. So that is the first law. Newton's second law of motion relates force and mass with acceleration. The acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force acting on it and is inversely proportional to its mass. The direction of the acceleration is in the direction of the net force acting on the object. So as we are saying, acceleration is proportional to the net force directly and inversely proportional to mass. So it could be rewritten as F equals to ma. Newton's third law of motion describes nature of force as a result of a mutual and simultaneous interaction between two different objects. Now, it's very important to understand that in third law, there are two different objects, right? It is not the internal force which we are talking about. So, one body exerts force on the other and the other exerts equal and opposite force on the first one. So these two objects, right? Which is action is equal and opposite to reaction. So these are the three concepts which help us solve all the questions in kinematics and dynamics. Okay, now let us see. While modeling the situation as given to us, what are our assumptions, right? So, since we are talking about a string, we are talking about the objects, let's be very clear about these things and also the pulley, right? So it is, when a flexible cord pulls an object, the cord is said to be under tension and the force it exerts on the object is the tension force Ft. Cord is inextensible with negligible mass. So whenever we say a string or a cord, it means it is inextensible and it has negligible mass. Flexible cord can only pull and cannot push an object. So you can only pull the object with the flexible cord, right? Since all the cord which we're talking about or the string which we talk about will be flexible, inextensible, and with negligible mass. Now these definitions, light object means what? Mass of the object is negligible compared to the other masses, so it is as good as zero. The force exerted at one end is transmitted undiminished to each adjacent piece of the core along the entire length of the other end. Tension is the same on both the ends of the light string. This is important to understand when we say what is light object. Inextensible string really means that the string does not stretch. Acceleration is same in the object at both the ends of the light string. Correct? That is what it means. And when we say smooth and light pulley, it means pulleys has no mass, tension 
is the same on either side of the pulley. You get the idea. So getting back to our question, which has all these things, these objects are the two masses. The string is the inextensible with negligible mass. So the tension is same on both the sides, right? And the acceleration will also be same on both the sides, okay? So now, let's go to the solution itself. So the question once again is, two boxes with mass M1 and M2 are attached at the end of a light inextensible string. The string passes over a fixed light pulley as shown in the figure. When the masses are released from rest, so it is important to see that initially the velocity is zero, right? So when it is released from rest with the string tau, the mass M1 travels vertically down a distance of 2.5 meters. So this travels down a distance of, we say S equals to 2.5 meters in time 1.25 seconds. Do you see that? So this is the information which is provided to us. Right? Released from rest means initial velocity being zero. So that is what is given to us. And what do we need to find? Find acceleration and tension in mass M2. That is what we need to find, right? Which is of 3 kg. So we started with the general question, but we gave you the mass of the second object as 3 kg. We need to find acceleration and tension. So we need to find what is acceleration and what is the tension in the string? Is that clear to you, right? So these are the two things which we need to find. And then we need to find the mass, which is not given to us, right? Now, when you are given the situation, first part of the equation clearly is a part of kinematics, where S, U, A, V are related. Now, from the given information, we will see what do we do? We need to find A, right? That is the case. So how can you find A with this? S equals to UT plus half AT square would help you, right? So S equals to UT plus half AT square. So this formula, which relates the variables dependent on time, can help you find acceleration. We are given everything except for acceleration in this case, and therefore, acceleration can be calculated. So I think this concept is clear. So this is the part of kinematics which we need to do first. Once we find the acceleration, then we can work on the mass of the objects. You get the idea and find the tension using the second law of motion. Okay. So let's first calculate the acceleration. So as I was saying, acceleration is what we need to find. The initial velocity is zero, time is 1.25 seconds, and displacement is 2.5 meters. So the formula which relates is S equals to UT plus half AT square. Now, substituting the values, we know U is zero. So the first term is zero, right? So this term here is zero. And we are left with half AT square. Rearranging half AT square, we get A as 2.5 divided by 1.25 whole square times 2. And you can calculate this as 3.2 meters per second square. Correct? Now, it is important to note that in this case, we are working on two significant figures. And therefore, the answer should also be rounded to two significant figures. So now we have done the first part, which is how do we find the acceleration of the whole system. Now it's very important to understand, since the string itself is inextensible, light string, the acceleration is same on both the sides. Of course, the direction is different, right? Now, and the tension also is the same. Now let's work on this word problem, which is finding the tension in the string and the other mass. Now let me just take a general question at this point. 
just as we started earlier with a general question and we gave some value of mass right now in this case what we will do here is we'll take a general solution of a pulley with two bodies as shown here so we have the same two different masses m1 and m2 and the pulley is given to us now the question which i made now here is two boxes with mass m1 and m2 are attached at the end of a light inextensible string find the general expression for acceleration of each box and tension in the cord so we'll find a formula in this situation for acceleration and tension and then knowing the values in, given in our question we'll find the answer is that clear to you perfect so when you want to solve such a question the first step is to make a free body diagram so in this particular system we can actually make a free body diagram for the whole system so this mass m1 we know is being heavier therefore the system moves downwards at this point with an acceleration a right now when it moves downwards then the other side also moves upward with the same acceleration a since the string is inextensible and that's why we discussed the assumptions okay one part second when the string is tau at that point you can see that there will be a tension in the string now this tension is same at all the ends of the string as shown in the figure correct so that is the tension in the string which we need to calculate these are the two masses and these masses will exert force the force being due to gravity m1g is the force due to mass m1 and m2g is the force due to mass m2 now these forces are related and now we can write down the relation of each consider the system shown here so at this point since the system is moving downwards correct with an acceleration of a definitely this mass m1 is greater than m2 we know m1 is greater than m2 correct there in this particular case we'll take direction moving down as positive so m1g minus this tension which is on the string is equal to the acceleration because the net force is m1g minus f2 so we have the net force which is equal to mass into acceleration that is second law of newton right so we get one equation now applying the same we get the second equation on mass 2 which is the tension minus m2g is m2a a being seen for both the masses because the string is inextensible and light is that clear to you so we get the two equations to work with now from these two equations clearly we could find the value of masses right we could find the value of tension all are related so if i add them up for example as you can see here then the tension calculate cancels out and we can calculate the relation between acceleration and mass but if we subtract it then we get the other equation so let's do the general solution now so what we have seen here is that the system of equations which we talked about one and two let me just rewrite them as one and two here right these are the two equations which we derived let's try to understand them once again boxes are moving in different directions and so we will consider the two systems separately right so so that was system one right and this is our system two why are we taking them as separate system because they are moving in different directions you get the idea right so if you have masses attached in on a table for example with a string they are moving in the same direction you could have taken them as one system not in this case so that is the first part to understand that the boxes are moving in different directions and so we consider two systems in this case now they will have the same acceleration and tension because of flexible inextensible string 
and the light pulley. So is that assumption clear to you, right? Now we just derived the two formulas which are considering the two portions of this important question, which is M1G minus FT is equal to M1A and FT minus M2G equals to M2A. Now, FT is the tension in the string, okay? When you add these two equations, FT and FT will cancel away. We get M1G minus M2G equals to M1A plus M2A as shown here. You can take A common as we did. We get sum of masses with A and difference of masses with G on the other side. Dividing, we get acceleration, which is equal to M1 minus M2 over M1 plus M2 times gravitational force G. So we get our formula for acceleration, correct? So that is the formula which we are looking forward to. So in our case, we know acceleration, we know one of the masses, so we can find the other mass, correct? Let's move forward and find the formula for tension also. So we have this formula for acceleration. Now, working on the same equation, we have this formula for acceleration, which is difference of masses divided by sum of masses times g. Now, coming back to our equations 1 and 2, we can find the tension. Rearrange the equation 2, right? So from here, we rearrange and we get Ft equals to m2a plus m2g. We know the value of a, right? So m2, substituting a as m1 minus m2 over m1g, we can actually get the equation. But here is what we are going to do. So from here, we will rearrange and then let me go from here to this place. Okay, so, okay, we'll show you all the steps. So Ft is M2A, the value of A is substituted here, M2, M1 minus M2 over M1 plus M2 times G. So that is the acceleration which we substituted. We have M2G here. Now, we can take M2G as common factor and then we have M1 minus M2 over M1 plus M2 plus 1. Taking common denominator, we get M1 minus M2 plus M1 plus M2 in the brackets. And then this simplifies to 2 times M1, right? So in this particular case, we can see that M2 minus and M2 plus cancel away. We get 2M1 multiplying with M2G. We get 2M1, M2G in the numerator denominator being m1 plus m2 and that gives us the formula for tension in the string which we are calling as ft correct so we have derived two general formulae in the given situation so i like you to pause the video at this stage and copy both the formulas right so for acceleration it is quotient of difference of masses and sum of masses multiplied by g and for tension it is two times the product divided by the sum times g so these two formulas we are going to apply to our given question so in our question we just found that the value of a is 3.2 meters per second the formula was derived and in this formula we substitute the value of A as 3.2 and we know that M2 is 3 kg. So for M2, we substituted 3, value of G is 9.81. So after substituting, rearrange. So basically cross multiply. So when you cross multiply, you get 3.2 into M1 plus 3 equals to 9.81 times M1 minus 3. Open the bracket as we have done bring the terms with m1 together simplify and get your answer for the mass it is calculated as 5.9 kg as shown here now once again 
we are writing our answer to two significant figures, right? This is kind of important to understand. You need to round your answer to two significant figures. Now, let's look into the tension part. The formula for tension was derived as 2 times m1, m2 over the sum of masses times g. Now we know m1, it has been calculated as 5.9 kg and 3 kg was given to us as the mass of the first string. Substituting these values in the formula itself, we get tension in the string as 39 newtons. Perfect. So that is how we can actually solve this particular question. So I hope the steps are absolutely clear. So the idea here is to provide you with a general solution of a system which involves a pulley with two masses where in first part we work with kinematics working with acceleration velocity displacement and time right so when we do that we find the missing part of it which was acceleration and then in the second part we actually get into dynamics where the mass and the force has been related with acceleration acceleration being equal to the net force divided by the mass perfect so that helps us to solve such a system i hope this approach will help you solve many questions from your notebook feel free to ask questions in case there are any doubts i hope that helps thanks for your time and all the best